Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Paul, and this is my wife, Numi. Hi. And uh, we live here in Belgium, in, in Leuven, with our five kids. We're a part of the Jerusalem community. And uh, we're going to share with you today. So our passage today is from John's Gospel. And the passages these days are, are clearly heading towards the cross. That's the that's what's in view. It's only a couple of weeks until the Feast of Easter, at least in the in the Western calendar. And so we're starting to get warnings and foreshadowings of, of the Lord's death and resurrection. Um, so it's just been about uh, Lazarus, in fact. John's Gospel has just told us about Lazarus being raised to life after three days. And uh, now it continues. And Jesus and his disciples are preparing for the Passover. Um, so I'm going to read it. It's from John 12. Verses 20 to 33. Now, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. And these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it, and said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And he said this to show by what death he was to die. So lots of questions. It's the Passover. People are going up to Jerusalem. Um, and Jesus is, is he's, he's predicting his death. And in a way, he's saying, if you want to follow me, you've got to die too. You've got to come and, and die with me. But the line that's always struck me is the, the grain of wheat. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so Jesus is saying that there's life in me. Hmm. Um, but the only way that life can be given to others, the only way it can bear fruit is if I die. So mm. if you want your life to bear fruit, give it away. And that will give you joy and freedom mm. and life. And these are pretty challenging words, you know. No one no one really believes that. If if you give away your life you you gain your life. But this in fact is what brings fruit. Mm. This is what the, the word is is saying to us. Mm. Yeah, as, as I think of people whose lives bear fruit, both in their own lives or in, in, the, in the lives of other people around them, I think of people who give of themselves, who really um, share of their life mm. with you, who die to themselves. Um, when I think how, how have I, or how do I feel most loved by people, I would say it's people who are willing to cancel their plans for me. It's people who are willing to suffer for me, who are, mm -hmm. um, yeah, who are there um, at the cost sometimes of something else yeah. for themselves. Um, as a mother, I've certainly experienced that. I, I have canceled plans so that my children may have life, yeah. which ultimately has given me life also. And, but Jesus is um, he's predicting his death on, on the cross and inviting us to carry our crosses. What do you, what do you think your cross is? Um, I think as I, as I walk through life, as I make decisions, as I 
commit myself to other people, community, marriage, children, family. As I walk that life in commitment to others, I get confronted with my humanity, which by nature falls short, right? Like, and I find that very yeah. unsettling. I wish I had what it takes to love this or this, that person more. I wish I had what it takes to not think this or that thought. I wish mm. I had what it takes to always be joyful. Yeah. And it's right there, I believe, in that frustration, in that suffering because of my humanity, that is mm. the cross for me. I would yeah. call that my cross, this frustration in my own humanity. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy because... I could choose to not commit to these things and not get confronted so much with with my fallen nature. But instead, God is asking me to to embrace that cross, to Mm -hmm. hold it close. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy because everything around me tells me that I should not. Yeah. Right. If something is difficult, walk away from it. Mm But as Christians, we believe, no, it's right there in the cross. Mm. That's where the Lord is. That's where he wants us to be. It's That's a life he has for me. That's what it means for me to follow yeah. him. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. And it's it's also, I think, uh, uh, not just beating our own limitations in terms of loving people, but also meeting our own human weakness in terms of uh, just... Uh, getting off our sofas sometimes you know mm-hmm. and entering into the mission and the, the life and the the sacrifice in some ways that, that God is inviting us into for the sake of, of his kingdom that's also partly my experience I can think of times like that where the cross has been getting out of my comfort zone or even living <laughs> for years outside of my comfort zone um, mission work is, is a bit mm-hmm. like that. You know, you regularly meet your own limitations. And it's 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 okay. It's okay to live in that place. It's okay to feel, feel the pain of mm-hmm. that sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like I said already, when we feel our cross, it's not easy to choose to have it present in our lives. Mm-hmm. The world around us tells us we should run away from pain and suffering, right? Like it should be drugged out of our lives. And... I mean, this little yeah. voice, you know, this little voice that tells you, go, just go, distract yourself, just meditate your way yeah. out of out of it, just eat more chocolate, drink more wine. <laughs> now that one, I would, I would keep. But like, <laughs> it's not a little voice. This little voice that tells it's you, a good just voice. go. That's a good voice. Yeah, <laughs> this little voice that tells you, just go, do your own thing. Yeah. Life will be easier. Uh, yeah, do your own. Yeah, it will be easier, but you'll be on your own, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but. Uh, but the grain of wheat, the, the image, I always come back to this image, it, it has to fall. Mm-hmm. The grain of wheat has to fall and it has to die. And if it doesn't die, it's a very unusual word. It says he, it remains alone. It's only after it dies, it bears fruit and is no longer on its own. Somehow it, it brings about life. It, it gives mm-hmm. life which is greater than itself. Uh, and it needs to land in rich soil as well in order for that to happen. Uh, and if the soil is rich, that's a good place to be, you know, if you're a grain of wheat. That's that's what you're made for. You're made for rich soil, so there's nothing to, to be afraid of. I think often our, our personal crosses, uh, they're usually designed in such a way that, that we need help from the Lord in order to carry them. Just like Simon helped the Lord carry his cross, we need uh, our brothers and sisters and we need the Lord ultimately to help us in carrying our crosses, uh, living life, following after him as a Christian. I regularly experience that, that I cannot do this, Lord, I'm at the end of, of whatever strength that I have. But as I, as I step in faith, as we step in faith, and I think this is the message of this passage, as we step in faith following after the Master, um, he meets us with his grace to, to live for him, to carry crosses that we have and to ultimately to die so that we can have life and bring life to others this verse 26 if anyone serves me he must follow me and where i am there shall my servant be also and if anyone serves me the father will honor him 
This is the promise, this is the joy that is set before us, the honour of the Father, as he says to, hopefully, me and you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy mm -hmm. of your master. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. uh, this is the great uh, promise, the great uh, message of the gospel, the, the freedom, the life, the joy of the gospel. And so I uh, hope you're doing well in these days, and God bless you mm -hmm. as you prepare for Easter. And hope to see you sometime. Yeah, yeah. hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Ba -ba. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da